Welcome back to NBA Today. So the Nets, they're riding a six-game losing streak. That's their longest in over two years. And it's in large part because of their defense. Brooklyn is allowing over 120 points per 100 possessions during this span. So that's the second worst mark in the NBA. And the Nets, they have struggled without Kevin Durant all season, who's missed the last nine games with a sprained MCL. And Brooklyn is 24-12 and 12 when KD plays, but just 5-10 and 10 when he doesn't suit up. And when he doesn't play, the Nets are allowing six and a half more points per game. So integrating Kyrie Irving on a part-time role, that's also been a little bit of an adjustment. He's been able to play in 10 out of 16 games since coming back on January 5th. And even though he's averaging almost 24 points per game, the Nets have won just four of those games. So back here with Chinea Gumake and Stephen A. Smith, we have spent so much time talking about the Nets this season. And they entered the year the betting favorites to win the title. And they actually still are the favorites to win the title. And that's with Kyrie Irving not being vaccinated and being on a part-time basis. That's with Kevin Durant and James Harden both missing time. But Chene, should they still be considered the favorite? They should not. Mm. Honestly, there's too many if, ands, or buts for them to be considered title favorites because at this point, we have yet to really see them consistently being pieced together. Not saying that they can't win a championship, but I equate this to them walking a tightrope. Mm. It's a very, very tightrope. Like before, maybe it was a little thicker, but now it's like <laughs> floss, okay? And when I look at the, you know, the overall landscape of the NBA, and if this is who's going to win the NBA championship, I'm looking at the Suns. I'm looking potentially at the Warriors. I'm looking at those Eastern Conference standings where Giannis and the Bucks, they know what it feels like. They know what it takes to get back there. There's so many teams that have fewer question marks around them than the Nets saying, hopefully KD's healthy. Hopefully James Harden, you know, ups his scoring. Hopefully Kyrie is available. I know we love favorites when it comes to betting and the odds, and we love that amalgamation of talent at the top, this big three. I mean, remember when they came together, it was like setting and destroying all offensive records. We just have yet to see that consistently for me to say, this team is a sure bet to win a championship. I don't disagree with you, because I've got the Warriors winning the chip. Mm. You know, the Suns, mad respect and love to them, and they could win it. Yep. Um, you see, I got two of my top five MVP candidates being from the Suns, for crying out loud. But is Steph Curry going to continue to shoot the way he was shooting before Kevin Porter got on his nerves and he dropped 40? Mm. I mean, that's the Steph Curry I know and love. Klay Thompson, he's coming. He's coming. Come playoff time, he'll be ready. Draymond Green, hasn't he been out the last several weeks? I think he'll be back. James Wiseman at some point is going to be there. And so when I look at that with Toscano Anderson and Gary Payton the second and Jordan Poole and these boys. I'm like, no, I got the word. Wiggins. Plus, plus Wiggins, of course, can't forget the All-Star. Plus, they play defense. But here's what I will say. I can't shun those who have the Brooklyn Nets as favorites for one reason and one reason. Why is that? You can't stop them. Mm. When the three of them are on the floor together, you cannot stop them. Let's understand something. Kyrie Irving is a superstar. And James Harden is having an off year in some people's eyes. He's averaging 22, 10, and 8. At some point in time, you know, again, as we get closer and closer to the playoffs, we know what time it is. And then you look at Kevin Durant, when healthy, arguably the best player on the planet in some people's eyes. To me, no debating at all. But look at Patty Mills and the contribution he's made. Look at Claxton, mm -hmm. Jones and these boys, and, and, and Brown. And I'm looking at these cats, and I'm like this. Even a, a, a Blake Griffin, he could dunk again. I don't know if you noticed. He could dunk. <laughs> I mean, he it, told it, me that in He's not, he's not in Detroit anymore. So suddenly he could dunk. Now that he's out of the Motor City, he could actually dunk the basketball again with his 6'9 self. I'm just saying, I'm looking at the Brooklyn Nets, and I'm like, my God. You can't stop them, and the, uh, but the Warriors defend, and that's why, to me, the Warriors... The only not thing the stopping them is availability. Right. And themselves, right? Because they haven't had that availability for the right. past two years. Zach Lowe said something interesting on the Low Post on his podcast okay. recently, and he said that he thinks the Nets are at risk, potentially, of being the greatest theoretical team <laughs> in NBA history. Yeah. Because theoretically, on paper, everything you were saying was absolutely fantastic. But if it doesn't come to fruition this year, if those those rumblings, those murmurs about James Harden, and he did not sign that contract extension. He can still make the most money by staying in Brooklyn. If that comes to fruition, then it's all about what coulda, woulda, and shoulda. Because, Stephen A., you're right. Talent-wise, no one can stop them. But we have yet to see all of that no. talent all together for an extended Can period I say of something time. with both of y'all here in attendance? I've said this before, but I'm going to repeat it again. I said it months ago, but I'm dead serious about this. If these brothers do not win a championship, 
Do you understand that Kevin Durant is on the verge for being recognized more so for the guy that left Steph Curry to go with Kyrie Irving than he is for the two chips and the two finals MVPs? I didn't say we'll forget him. I didn't say we'll diminish him because he's a champion. He's a two-time champion, a two-time NBA Finals MVP. Listen, I'm saying, headline, <laughs> what he'll be known more for, what we'll be talking about. People go like this. I'll give you a first example. This is what Malika will do. Okay. He's a two-time champion. He's a two-time NBA Finals MVP. Do you, can you believe he left Steph for Kyrie? See the difference? I hear you, and obviously a championship would move that needle incredibly yes. far, but I also think... Coming back the way he has and the way he did from his injury, it's hard to overlook that in this whole conversation about what nope, he did. No, it's not. You know why? Because he's so <laughs> phenomenal. Kevin Durant is so phenomenal. He's so phenomenal. In the conversation for one you, of the greatest players ever. I think that's it right there. Bam. And that's Bam. and that's it. I right. think when we think of Kevin Durant, no matter if he wins a championship or not, we're going to say that as a seven-footer, he was the greatest scorer, the most gifted. And now when it comes to teams, he chose to leave the Warriors. His but then gift and his talent makes it hard, especially if the Warriors don't win. Injury, well, All pandemic, I'm talking about is headlines, narrative. Maybe. I'm not talking about substance. But we headlines know and narrative are different than truth. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.